Hello students, this is Brock Skaggs and I make this video showing how to compare your solution you're getting from SOLIDWORKS Motion to a theoretical solution that maybe you've already done uh, using hand calculations to derive the formulas for velocity and acceleration and maybe position of some output point that you're wanting to know information about and basically you're wanting to compare uh, that solution to whatever SOLIDWORKS is spitting out from SOLIDWORKS Motion. And so I'm picking up from the last video where we worked on this lazy tongs mechanism. Um, go ahead and show the motion of it here, and we were able to create some points inside of Sol or some plots, excuse me, inside of SolidWorks Motion. And so I'll just show one of the plots here. Uh, this was the linear displacement plot, and what point we're talking about here is basically this point on the far right end of the mechanism here. We've got the slider, the center point of this circle, and we were selecting this edge here uh, because that is the fixed pin connection associated with our initial diagram that we were working on. And so what we're going to do is basically be using MS Excel here. And so I've got a couple sheets started, um, one for the theory side of the calculations and one for the SOLIDWORKS data. And so let's go ahead and clear out some of that previous data that we were already working with there. And so, next step would be to uh, work out the theory part. We can go ahead and do that, and then we can grab the data from SOLIDWORKS and then start comparing. And so I've already kind of set up this spreadsheet here. I've got my first few cells here uh, just showing some information on the input side. Uh, the overall length, which was the length of those longer members, was 6 inches. And then this expression here, this equation, was what we entered into SOLIDWORKS Motion to describe the driver. And the driver was basically talking about the position of point A there, which is right next to my mouse there. Basically the pin connection associated with that slider on the left hand side. And so uh, V of A and A of A, talk about the linear velocity of point A and the linear acceleration of point A. Uh, those are things that you would have to derive yourself. And so hopefully you know that the uh, first derivative of position is velocity. The first derivative of velocity is acceleration. And so between each one of these lines, I'm basically just taking a derivative with respect to time in order to generate those equations. And so these equations are what we're going to actually type into the cells for columns B, C, and D here. Uh, but first we need time. Well, time, we start at time equals zero, and we had a 25 frame per second setting in our SOLIDWORKS motion from the uh, previous video. Uh, so that amounts to a calculation every 0.04 seconds there. So I'll just set it up, take the previous cell, add 0.04 there. And so here I can go ahead and drag this down and I believe the end of these box cells should be exactly five seconds here. And so five seconds is correlating to the duration that we had for our motion study inside of SOLIDWORKS. Uh, so for the next three columns here that are in dark, I made sure to label those because of the driving characteristics. Uh, those are the characteristics of point A here. We have the equations in rows three, four, and five there. And so simply we just need to type those in to these cells. And so uh, there's the first one, for instance. Negative 2 times the sine of 2 times t. And notice for t, I'm just calling the time value in that given row of my spreadsheet here. The time at that instant is what we want to be looking at. And then the 3.75, that was our initial condition offset that we worked with at the beginning. And so I should be able to just double click that little square in the bottom right hand corner of that cell. And what it does is, of course, populate that through the end of the time column. And I'll do the same thing here for velocity and acceleration. And so very quickly we'll go through the velocity there and then the accelerate, acceleration here. And so I've got them entered. I'll just select the cell and then you can see where my cursor changes a little bit there. And I'll double click in order to spread that down to the rest of the cells. So the next thing we have here is this angle theta. And so I worked out the derivation of how I found the relationships here on the right hand side. And so you can uh, study those if you would like to better understand it. Uh, but if you're just trying to follow the motions, theta is this 
angle right here between the horizontal and this inclined member here. And so the relationship that we worked out for theta here was theta was equal to the inverse cosine of x sub a divided by L. And so instead of inverse cosine, we'll put a cosine here in Excel. X sub a, well, x sub a at this given instant in time is just going to be the value of x sub a in this row. And we'll divide it by the overall length L. And so L I've got stored in the cell B2 there. And I'll hit the close parenthesis there and then accept that inside of Excel. And so we want to make one minor change to this. If I come up here to where the actual function is at, um, when we drag this down, we of course want X sub A to be dragging down with us, uh, but this B2 value we want to lock in place because we don't want the B2 uh, to be dragged at all. And so you can put dollar signs in front of both the row number, which is the 2, and the column letter, which is the B, manually there, which locks it, or a shortcut is just hitting F4 there, while I've got my cursor inside of the B and the 2 in order to place those manually for me, or automatically for me. And so that is looking good, and we'll just accept that. Now those values need to be clear to understand those are in radians, and so those are a little bit harder to just look at and know the value or see if it's reasonable or not. And so I'm going to have another separate column that's just really going to be to check with, and I'm going to say convert that value in radians to degrees there with that function call. And so equals degrees, it's expecting a value to be passed in with units of radians, and it's making the conversion to degrees there. And I'll go ahead and accept that. And so 51.32 degrees is roughly the start angle. And we can kind of make a check of that here. If I come here and I pull it to zero, go back to this position, it's basically asking, okay, if I look at the horizontal here and this angle right here, does that look like it could possibly be in the neighbor of, of 51.3 degrees? And I say, well, that's pretty close, yeah. Um, it's off of these... It's not real small, so I know it's not close to zero. It doesn't look real, real steep, so it's not exactly 90 degrees. It's definitely an acute angle. And so all those things make me think, yeah, I should be on the right track there. And so next, X sub B, V sub B, and A sub B. Uh, those are the position, velocity, and acceleration of point B, which is our pin connection associated with the right-hand slider there. And so for this specific version of the lazy tongs, I went through and worked out uh, the relationships here. And it ends up being very simple. Notice x sub b here is equal when it's all said and done to negative 3 times x sub a. And so this is just going to be negative 3 times whatever I have in x sub a at that instant. So I'll go ahead and enter that and then spread it down. v sub b here is negative 3 times v sub a. So doing the same thing there. And once more, a sub b is just negative 3 times a sub a. And so for this lazy tong mechanism, the relationships are, are quite simple between uh, the uh, position, velocity, and acceleration of point a and point b. Uh, they're not always quite that clean. Um, so just be prepared for some more uh, complex expressions to have to be entered into your Excel cells uh, depending on the exact mechanism you're looking at and the exact point that you're looking at or the back quantity you're trying to uh, verify there. And so at this point we've got all the theory side of things. Um, we have position, velocity, and acceleration of the output point that we're uh, trying to determine its motion of calculated in columns G, H, and I there. So next we need to get the SOLIDWORKS data out of SOLIDWORKS motion. And so I've got a tab here set up uh, where I'll just import the SOLIDWORKS data too. And so how do we get it out of motion is the next question. There we go. Just need to get into SOLIDWORKS first. And one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on a plot and I will go to show the plot. And so here is the linear displacement of the point of interest. And so while the plot's showing, um, I believe you can do a few things here. Um, one thing you can do is right click on the plot and go export to CSV. Uh, this is going to save the plot as a comma separated values file. And then you can use that file in order to import the data into MS Excel. 
Or another way, and probably a quicker way in this case, is I can right click on the, the plot here in the tree and go export to spreadsheet. And you'll see what happens when I click it, is that it's going to generate another session of Excel. And so, wait for it here. Now you can see Sheet 5 is open. Let's see if we can get back into Excel. There we go. And the Sheet 5 should be right here. And there we go. Uh, it's lagging a little bit, I believe, probably because of the recording of the video. But that should be uh, very quick for you there. And so we managed to get Sheet 5 in here. Uh, it's a worksheet with two different sheets in it. You've got Plot 1, which is a plot of the data itself there. And then you've got the actual data inside of Sheet 1 here. And so here, instead of having an individual worksheet for each thing you're bringing out of SolidWorks Motion, it'd be best to just copy and paste this data into another sheet inside of your worksheet you've already started there. And that's what I would strongly suggest doing. And so I don't want to save Sheet 5 here. And so then you would do that for velocity and acceleration. And so let's try to do that and see if we can do it even though it's lagging a little bit here. And so I'll show plot and I'll export to spreadsheet. And so you can see it here in my open menus up uh, here. It is right here. And so that one went much quicker there. And so here we've got the plot. Here we've got the data and at this point I don't have to recopy A and B. Notice these A and B columns are the same as the first one and so really I'm just interested in what starts with the linear velocity header there. And I'll copy it all the way down and paste here. Now we can get rid of this guy and once more for acceleration and so the last plot will show plot 3 and then we'll export it to a spreadsheet. It's already up, very good. And we'll get linear acceleration here. And so again, I'm just copying that column, the linear acceleration data, because I know that the first two columns, the frame and the time, should be the same across all three of these. Uh, also, be sure you're mapping things up correctly horizontally here. Make sure that the time zero values all match up here time one values all match up here and so on and so forth there. That way things match up correctly. Okay, and so at this point we've been able to grab the data now from SOLIDWORKS Motion. Um, we have this sheet containing just SOLIDWORKS data and this sheet containing the theory data. And so now we'd like to compare those. Um, one easy way to compare them is just to graph them on the same plot and see if they line up or not. And so the way I usually like to do that is from the uh, here we go, the insert tab inside of Excel and we go from the scatters, I like to start with this scatter with straight lines and markers plot and I'll right click on it, I'll go to select data and we'll add and our first name we'll call this the theory data and we'll select the X and Y values well here I want time to be the independent variable so those will be in the X values and so notice I'm selecting the time column or time range in this sheet without the headers and then the Y value should be the position or displacement and so that should be this column here, column G on the sheet. And so there is the data. And so here I'm just going to take a little bit of time to format this. I'll go ahead and turn the markers off and just leave it as just the, the lines there. And so that's looking fairly good. And so on the same plot we also want to show the numerical side of things as well for the data we got from SOLIDWORKS. And so what we're going to do is go to right click and select that again and we're going to add a separate series. And so I'm going to just go add and I'll call this the SOLIDWORKS data. The series X values. Here I'm going to go back to the SOLIDWORKS data sheet now and grab its time column. And so just dragging down this range 
until I have all of the data enclosed. And then for the, the Y values here, I want this column. And again, we're on the SOLIDWORKS data sheet, so we know this data is coming from SOLIDWORKS. And so now notice we've got the two ranges there. Um, I'll hit OK. Um, you can't see it now because basically the orange is covering up the blue. And so again, I'll format the data series so we can get a little better look at this. Uh, the markers are already off, which is good. Line type, usually I like to make one of them dashed. I'll make it black so it stands out a little bit better there. And so here's the two data series. Um, you can see the theories in blue. The black dashed one is the ones coming from SOLIDWORKS and they're lining up exactly on top of each other. That's basically showing, hey, we've got a very good agreement between these two data sources. Uh, another thing you should probably do is come in here um, and clean this up a little bit. And so I'll just go to one of the layouts. So we can have a title. This is the position plot here. And so here I'll just say position in inches and the time in seconds here. That way this is a little bit more informative than it started off with. And so uh, that's looking very good. Um, both of the data series are agreeing with each other for the position of that point on the mechanism. And so we have pretty good confidence that, um, A, we didn't mess anything up in SOLIDWORKS, didn't um, actually have a bad input there that would cause us to mess up or possibly a bug finding it in SOLIDWORKS. And on the theoretical side of things, it, we we're pretty good thinking that we've also uh, been able to do all of our calculations right on this side. And so now we've checked the position of this point B with respect to the origin. What about its velocity and acceleration? Well, we've already done a lot of the work in order to setting these plots up. And so one thing we can do is just copy this plot. So I'll just Control-C, Control-V it. And we'll change this now to the velocity plot. And so this is where it helps to have spreadsheets and the way they're set up. So this is now going to be velocity, and it'll be inches per second. But we need to change the data, right? And so looking at here, if I just left click on one of the curves here, it pulled up the SOLIDWORKS data series. And so the column B was the time, column C was the position, and column D, if you looked over the next spot, was the velocity. And so what I'm going to do is just replace those C's with D's on that element there, and I'll hit enter. Um, one thing we do is go back and check column D is indeed the velocity. And since everything is in the same set of rows, uh, that should then flip this to the velocity curve. Another way you can do it is now that I have them separated, I can select one. You can see that highlight here on this sheet, and so I could just drag over, and so that's now looking at the velocity plots. Uh, you can see they match up very nice, as we would hope. And then we can also come over here and very quickly change the dash type of one so we can see them on top of each other there. Uh, so that is the velocity. Let's do it once more real quick for the acceleration. And so this is acceleration. Acceleration here. This is now going to be in inches per second squared for the unit there. Time is the common unit for the horizontal axis. Here, just left clicking on the first one, gives me the SOLIDWORKS series, and this should be now E. So we're just moving to the right in those columns. And then on the blue one, we can actually see, so I can drag over as well. And once more for a final time to reformat. All right, so if I kind of move this off to the, the right a little bit, uh, there is our position plot, our velocity plots, and our acceleration plots there. And you can see what we've done. We've got now data confirming it from both this, the analytical side or theoretical side there, as well as the SOLIDWORKS motion data also supporting this solution. And so that should end this video. And so hopefully this helps you um, be able to verify your SOLIDWORKS solutions and also help you 
gain confidence in your theoretical side as well there. Uh, basically, the more of these problems you can work, the better. And here's a nice tool that you can use SolidWorks Motion in order to check your theoretical solutions there. And so, as always, thank you for watching the video.